There are so many regular old boring boat shaped ships out there, isn't it time they mixed it up a bit and got a little creative? We've put together a few more of the unusual ships, and a few less so, it must be said, for your lucky old eyeballs, so hold fast and keep watching. From a massive floating city to a big old barrel of boat, here are 20 weirdest ships in the world. Number 20. Freedom Ship For some reason, people have spent an inordinate amount of time messing about with designs for floating cities. Perhaps this fixation is because we know we're all doomed as the sea levels keep on rising, and perhaps it's just because boats are fun. Either way, there's no obvious reason that anyone would want to actually live on something that is basically a cruise ship. Is this the ship that will change travel forever? This is the so-called Freedom Ship Mega Ship, designed so absurdly large that it seems completely impractical at best, downright dangerous at worst. But what do I know? I only work here. So some bright spark imagined this massive monster ship floating city thing that could accommodate as many people as 100,000, and it was presented as an alternative to land-based cities, the idea being that it contains all the streets, homes, and general gubbins that you might find in a regular city environment. This proposed 25-story high mega ship would be 4,500 feet long, 750 feet wide, and 350 feet feet tall. But the main difference between this sort of city and the usual land sort is the fact that if you happen to live on it, you are essentially a prisoner. Yes, there's a reason that they use ships as prisons after all. In a normal city, there are ways to get away from the intense, stacked up feeling of claustrophobia you might encounter when crammed in with thousands of other people in close proximity. But if you're in the middle of the ocean, where the heck can you go? Yes, you may be able to circumvent the pesky borders and live outside the law of existing states and whether or not that's a positive is debatable, but you're also trapped at the whims of the weather, other ship dwellers, and likely as not an insane captain who might take you all hostage at any given moment. Then you'd be really up ship creek without a paddle. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. USS Zumwalt the USS Zumwalt is a United States Navy guided missile destroyer, meaning that it's a ship that's equipped with loads of guided missiles which are employed during battle to provide anti-aircraft warfare to the naval fleet. What a fun one! This ship is a relatively new addition to the United States Navy. She was first commissioned in Baltimore in October of 2016 and was designed to have multi-million dollar capabilities. This particular destroyer class is specially created for combat in deep water and is designed designed to support ground troops in attacks on land, as well as the usual naval destroyer jobs of anti-air cover and anti-submarine warfare. And so she's an all-arounder, but also has an appearance which is rather unlike any naval destroyer that's come before. This angular, boxy shape is more like a spaceship than a seafaring one. It's been tested for the ultimate poor conditions at sea, and the vessel's wave-piercing bow is inverted, and the shape of the ship has been sculpted to reduce the radar cross-section. All in all, this is a ship that's a modern warship that's been designed and tested to withstand contemporary battle conditions and to provide backup in all arenas of war. Number 18. MV Stuart J. Court now, I don't know how weird this ship really is. I mean, it kind of looks like a fairly bog-standard boring old boat to me, but there you go. Back in 1972, when she would be launched, the MV Stuart J. Court was the first vessel that measured 1,000 feet to service the Great Lakes. Back then, the vessel was used by the Bethlehem Steel Corporation to transport, well, steel and other such things. She's a very long ship, that much is true, but then again, that's the nature of these sorts of ships. 
they need all that space to jug all that massive cargo around. But she didn't begin all long and elegant. When the bow and stern sections of the vessel were built in Mississippi, they were then joined together without the middle bit. And for her first outing, she traveled to the Great Lakes. And the ship was just 182 feet long and was given the rather unflattering nickname of Stubby. These days, though, she's still in service and trundles iron ore up and down between Superior, Wisconsin, and Burns Harbor, Indiana. You know, if you give a ship about such things. Number 17, USS Snowdrop. The USS Snowdrop began as a less fancy Albert de Groot, a bit like a guy in his drag queen name. Anyways, this ship may or may not have been weird, but I'm absolutely at a loss of what to tell you about it since there are no pictures and it was apparently broken up in a New York Naval Yard back in 1884. So who really knows what images you're being shown right now? The USS Snowdrop was a screw tugboat that was built in Buffalo, New York back in 1863 and it would then be purchased by the United States Navy in October of that same year. which is when it dropped its Albert de Groot name and went with a much prettier snowdrop. Until spring of 1864, she served in New York and then was sent on assignment to the North Atlantic Blockading Squadron for the last two years of the American Civil War. Sometime in 1883, she would then be sent to New York and finally broken up at that yard in 1884, where she was then reduced to some pieces of ship, I should imagine. Number 16, Sea Bubble. Sea Bubble is an electric hydrofoil seawater taxi designed to do a bunch of useful transportation business without a whole lot of fuss or noise or pollution. And in the latest of Fad's department, it kind of sounds like some pretty hot ship. Anyway, they've allegedly designed this thing with a motto in mind, zero wave, zero noise, zero emission. Seems to me that the wave and noise parts might be some of the fun being in a boat, but what do I know? If nothing else, they have succeeded in making a boat that looks just about as boring and box-like as you could possibly imagine. And that's a shame, really, especially if you're going for being super silent and a tiny bit boring. Why not jazz up things a bit? Make it a cool shape or a snazzy paint job. Whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Number 15, Ramform Tethys. This is a bizarre looking boat. From the front, it looks to all intents and purposes like a regular ship, you know, all pointy and purposeful and stuff. But from the back, it's a much different story altogether. Yes, the ramform Tethys, as well as having a funny name, has no backside. She appears to have been in a terrible rear end removing incident where she's been drastically foreshortened, but apparently this is on purpose. This is a research or survey vessel, and her shape and size are designed to provide a large and extremely stable platform from which to conduct seafaring testing and experiments. The ship was built in 2016 and flies under the flag of the Bahamas, operating out of Nassau. She is a seismic ship which is used for surveying the ocean to establish the best locations for oil drilling in the middle of the sea. Number 14, Pioneering Spirit. This ship is the very largest construction vessel in the whole entire world, meaning that she's used in the oil and gas industries to install and remove platforms in the sea. Wow, we're really pulling out all of the most thrilling ships we can think of today. You lucky, lucky so-and-sos. The Pioneering Spirit is a monster machine, not only a ship, but also a vehicle designated to maneuver and assist in the construction of massive heavy equipment. This ship is capable of lifting such extraordinary weights that it's known to have been used for the installation of record weight pipelines. Those pipes can weigh as much as 20,000 tons, and it's even capable of lifting an entire platform piece that weighs as much as 48,000 tons itself. And so it's something that's really much more than a regular ship would look pretty different than it's given. The vessel behaves like a ship when at sea and has a much better wave response than many other crane vessels. It features greater stability in adverse weather conditions and is able to make heavy lifts even in hostile seas and at any water depth. You could say that it can really handle its ship. Number 13, Motor Yacht A. There are some big-ass mega yachts out there, 
It seems as though the oligarchs of the world have these things parked in ports all over the place, and so the Motor Yacht A is one of these privately owned mega yachts. In fact, it's one of the very biggest in existence and ranked as the 27th biggest yacht on the whole planet, which must make its owner feel very important indeed, I'm sure. So what exactly does a massive super mega yacht set you back then? Well, in the rumors, if they're true, this one was ordered in November of 2004 and then finally delivered in 2008 at the eye-watering cost of 300 million United States dollars. Ding dong! But it's a big one. At 390 feet long and almost 6,000 tons, this is not a vessel that is for hiding away in like some sort of shrinking violet. In fact, even the way that it moves is unlike other yachts. The designer actually set about making a vessel that moved in a completely different way from other boats. He wanted it to move through the water while barely making a ripple on the surface, kind of like a whale. The interior is obviously as opulent as you would expect of such a fancy boat. There are mirrored surfaces everywhere, crystal is used at every available opportunity, and there are seven guest cabins as well as the master suite, along with a swimming pool and that all-important important helipad. I mean, I won't even consider going anywhere that doesn't have a dedicated helipad. One is not an animal, you know. Number 12. Edda Freya with its extremely bright orange and yellow paint job, it would be impossible not to see the Eta Freya if it were heading your direction. It's one of the largest offshore construction vessels in existence, its job being to perform a lot of heavy-duty tasks in some of the least hospitable waters in the Northern Hemisphere. It measures 150 meters long and 27 meters wide, giving the Eta Freya a massive deck capacity of 2,300 square feet. The ship's dead weight is 10,000 tons, and she has the space to accommodate as many as 140 passengers and crew at any one time. This state-of-the-art construction ship has been run by the company Deep Ocean since it was delivered in 2016. The ship was designed and built for operations worldwide and has been especially engineered to perform tasks like cable laying operations and offshore constructions, but she also has the capacity for use in performing advanced maintenance and repair operations. And she does all of this while dressed like a flipping clown. Number 11. The Flip Ship Next up, we have this especially weird and wonderful offering from the world of ships and shiz. This is the flip ship so-called because she can literally be flipped to move from a horizontal position to a vertical one. And apparently that's a useful feature, not just a scene that's reminiscent of that bit in Titanic. But why do we need to flip the ship on end, I hear you cry? Well, according to the United States Navy, to whom the vessel belongs, it's all part of the ship's special skills as a research vessel. It's designed to flip up in this way because they say that the horizontal ship is not very good at taking accurate readings of the waves and other other ocean-based data because it's subject to movements of the water and that reduces the effectiveness of the measuring devices. And so they designed it to flip up and stand up vertically in the water. It takes around 28 minutes to flip the ship from horizontal to vertical and then it's fully functional as a research machine to take measurements of wavelength, density, and water temperatures as well as the acoustics of the ocean and sampling of flora and fauna. Oh, how thrilling. Number 10. MV Blue Marlin. Well, I'm sorry about this, but the next ship is yet another heavy-duty vessel that is used to hoof stuff about in the ocean to build oil rigs and pipelines and other such fossil fuel -y activities. There do seem to be a rather lot of these sorts of ships out there just lugging lots of massive platforms and pipes into position, don't there? Anyways, try to stay awake, because we're bound to have some more juicy boat action later on down the line. Now we all just need to look at a few more heavy lifting ships before we've completely exhausted that particular subject. Here is the MV Blue Marlin, a semi-submersible heavy lift vessel that was specially built to move massive drilling rigs. It's a comfortable sort of working ship which is equipped with 38 cabins that can accommodate as many as 60 people on board. There's also a gymnasium, a sauna, and a swimming pole. I ship you not. Number 9. Cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. 
Now finally, we have a funny looking ship. And it's about time as well. Unfortunately though, this ship is no longer out there sailing the seven seas. In fact, it would be sold for scrap decades ago. Anyways, this is a Soviet ship that went by the name of something that I probably mangled the pronunciation of the first time, so I'm not going to try again. And it was created to detect and receive satellite communications as a Soviet space control monitoring ship. Completed for use in December of 1971, this vessel would be put to work in support of the Soviet space program. Its unusual appearance was the result of two massive and two slightly less massive parabolic dish antennas that were positioned on the top of the ship. By 1986, the ship was the largest of its kind in the whole entire world and was the literal flagship of communication vessels in the USSR. They could massively extend the range of tracking for the cosmonauts that were on the missions in space and also for any unmanned ventures as well since the ship allowed communications even when the space mission was not over Soviet Union. Shortly after the collapse of the Soviet Union, this ship was then sold for scrap and the rest of the communication ships met with similar fates. Number 8. Kawasaki Ship this is an indisputably weird looking ship, a spooky looking vessel with a bunch of big balls on board. Except these are not balls, but rather they're tanks for storing and transporting hydrogen. What a fun one we're having here today. This is a Japanese creation which would be designed and built by Kawasaki Heavy Industries as a cargo containment system. The ship apparently offers the world's biggest capacity as a liquefied hydrogen carrier. Each tank has storage space of up to 40,000 cubic meters. But for why, you may be asking? Well, apparently, the transportation of massive amounts of hydrogen in liquid form is not not only a tricky thing to do, but it's also kind of dangerous. These clever nerds at Kawasaki Company have developed a system in which the stuff is kept stable and safe for transportation as they believe that it's going to become an increasingly utilized resource as we develop more clean energy needs into the future. Hydrogen energy is something that they reckon will help the process towards decarbonization. Number 7. CLV Nexon's Aurora well, the thrills just never end around here, do they? This is only a massive cable laying vessel for your lucky old eyeballs. Goodness me, I'm really spoiling you today, aren't I? This big red and yellow boat is a purpose-built CLV, that's what it stands for, cable laying vessel, which is so fancy and proper that it's apparently been equipped with all of the world's most swish and advanced cable laying equipment. Yes, I know it's just too much to handle. Anyways, in case you're actually wondering what all that yellow junk is on the deck, well, it was all part of a specific cable laying capability. These extra exciting abilities include power cable laying, bundle laying, cable jointing and repair, and even cable system protection. Mm -mm. This massive hulk of a ship was built in 2021 and has been sailing under the Norwegian flag ever since. The overall length of this big ass boat is 513 feet and her width is 102 feet. Number 6. Shikyu Ship Next up, we have a Japanese scientific drilling ship named Shikyu. This ship was built to participate in the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program, or IODP. The Shikyu would be designed to drill as much as 4.3 miles into the Earth, below the seabed, and apparently this is where the Earth's crust is much more thin, and therefore it's possible to drill way further into the next layer, the Earth's mantle, and from here than anywhere else. In fact, that has been achieved by this vessel much deeper than any any other hole that's ever been drilled in the middle of the ocean so far. Now will these holes begin acting like a plug hole if they keep drilling deeper and deeper, or will the earth spring a leak? Anyway, this is essentially what the vessel's designed to do, it just simply goes around the ocean drilling big holes. Number 5. MPI Adventure Although this ship looks a lot like a child got extra creative with a load of Lego bricks, it's actually a wind turbine installation vessel, if you can imagine such a thing. That's right, all the renewable energy stuff has to be plumbed in somehow, and when the idea is to bung a whole lot of wind power bits and pieces out at sea, then they needed to invent a ship that could get out there and then perform the task of installing and maintaining said wind power. Gosh, this is all so fascinating. I'm definitely not dropping off at all now. This big 
functional boat is 454 feet long and 133 feet wide and is propelled by three big Rolls-Royce thrusters and six Rolls-Royce engines. Oh, so fancy. The MPI Adventure has a lot of accommodations on board for all the crew required to assemble a wind farm at sea. There are cabins for 112 and space for as many as 200 people on board. Then there's a lot of heavy-duty equipment like a massive crane that can hoist up 1,000 tons of stuff. Gosh, what a deep joy. Number 4. Galaxy of Happiness With a name like Galaxy of Happiness, it seems that this ship is likely making some very confident claims about its abilities. This is a super swankster luxury motor yacht, measuring 175 feet long and can accommodate up to six guests in three super fancy schmancy suites. The boat was delivered to its owner in 2016 and had been given a fully swished out interior by the Latvian design house Latitude Yachts. They like to give stuff a luxury look, apparently. The vessel itself has some credentials that may or may not mean something to you if you happen to like that sort of thing. The yacht was built with a composite hull and superstructure and teak decks. It's powered by twin diesel engines and can cruise most comfortably at 24 knots, a maximum speed of 30 knots, and she has a range of 2300 nautical miles on a full tank or tanks of fuel. She has freshwater tanks which can hold around 5,000 liters of water, you know, in case you're especially thirsty, one would assume. Number 3. The Zipper Boat so here is a boat that is exactly what its name would suggest. The boat is indeed shaped like a zipper. The effect of this is obvious now, isn't it? As it speeds through the water, its wake looks like an unzipped zipper, which is kind of cool. Is it the ultimate novelty transport? And what exactly would be the point of such a thing? Well, it turns out that art might be the point of it. In 2020, the zipper fastener shaped boat made an appearance in an art installation at Design Art Tokyo. It was the centerpiece of an installation that was titled Opening the River. Yeah, you see what they did there, right? This included a video presentation of the boat doing its thing and zipping up and down the river. It traveled daily between a bunch of places in Tokyo Bay, Japan, and gave plenty of people an interesting view during a year that was otherwise fraught with stress and heavy with boredom. So that was nice, I should imagine. The boat was created by a Japanese designer as an art piece, and so that boat that resides underneath the shell of this zipper is irrelevant. The artist got the idea while on an aeroplane looking out of the window and noticed that a boat parts the water in a way that's reminiscent of a zipper opening up a piece of clothing. So naturally, as an artist, he decided to turn this into a real-life object. Back in 2010, he debuted the small prototype of the zipper boat, and then modifications would be made. He went back to the drawing board and came up with this much bigger version. It measures 30 feet long and is split into two parts. The one half is where all the actual boating stuff happens, and the other is just to accommodate all that zipper business. Well, it is unique, if nothing else. Number 2. The Roller Boat Sometimes someone will have a huge idea, an idea that can seem like the absolutely perfect solution for all kinds of problems, but when it's made into a reality, that idea may not quite live up to all the hype. Teslas, for example, but I digress. This is the roller boat. It sounds fun and I am intrigued. It's invented by a Canadian lawyer. Uh, there's your first clue that it might not be the most solid engineering idea. Back in the 1890s, and this ship was hotly anticipated and hyped to all high heaven. It's created Creator claimed that the ship would solve a boatload of problems, which included ending seasickness, slashing ocean crossing times, and his plan was to become a millionaire out of the whole creation as well. Uh, not a lot then. Anyways, you could probably see where this one was headed. Yes, that's right, it totally tanked. A large crowd would gather on the waterfront of Toronto's docks to witness the launch of a very unusual looking ship. The hype had been so enormous, and plenty of people were interested to see it happen. When it was finally brought out of the shelter, it it looked more like a massive tank or a boiler than any kind of seafaring vessel. It landed on the water safely and appeared to float well, first hurdle completed. The next goal was then to make the boat move. This would prove to be trickier of a thing to do. It would take a couple days for the boat to finally paddle out of the harbor and into the water. It had no steering, so the man at the helm just had to let the machine be carried where the water took it. Still though, it was deemed a success at that point. Testing and whatnot rumbled on and on for years, and each 
each time, they seemed to get no further and apparently could not achieve speeds greater than 7 miles per hour. Oh, and even then, the rolling of the water was enough to bring the vessel to a complete standstill. For the next decade, they messed about with the boat and tried yet more stuff to make it work, but to no avail. Then one day, during a gale, the roller boat broke free from its moorings and smashed into the side of a steamer vessel. And this would be the final death knell of the project, which was then caught up in lawsuits, and finally a judge ordered that the thing be scrapped. Weirdly, nobody did this, and the roller boat just sat in the deep mud in the dock for years. It then finally disappeared in 1933. Number 1. Siam Diamond and finally, for your eyeballs, I have a fairly boring big boat that's apparently really good at all that modern requirements of low emissions, low fuel consumption, and extra safety for all of those crew and cargo on board. Well, good for this ship, I suppose. It's a vessel that's equipped with a high-capacity gantry crane, which is used for anchor and cargo handling, and apparently, so they claim, it means a safer work environment for its crew. And that's really all there is to say about this particular vessel, so there you go. Well, that was quite the mixed bag, now wasn't it? There were some super weird ships in there, that's for sure, and then a confusing selection of boring ones. But then, what do I know? I'm not exactly ship hot in the boats department. So what do you think of the more weird ones? Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Or, you know, you can always just lambast the heck out of me for false advertising. Whatever you fancy. Also, be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.